2015 Cadillac XTS. Got a new rear brake rotors. Basically, brake rear brakes, brake pads, and rotors. Okay, and possibly a caliper because the other side is metal to metal. I'm on the right side, so basically, what you want to do is spray down some penetrant, get a T30 Torx, and break this little retainer bolt out. You can take that bolt out with your Torx bit, a T30. You snap this off, then you just get a little chisel and chisel it the direction that you want to remove it. And if that don't work, then you have to get a die grinder and put an X on it and, and then chisel the little pieces out. If you do the X, it makes it a lot easier to remove. All right, so once you get that done, then you want to get a uh, 13 millimeter remove caliper bolt here and a caliper bolt here and this is what they look like and once you get those out then you can take the caliper off you can get a flat blade screwdriver in here and pry the caliper off be careful of the retainer the, the, the brake hardware right here bundle clips you want to go between here and there, not between there and there. All right, and pry it off. This has got the parking brake in it, so I have to take care of that later. Set it up off to the side. <clears throat> now you got your caliper bracket right here. It's got two 18 millimeter head of bolts right here and right there. You want to remove those, and you can remove your caliper bracket. Okay, here's the copper bracket bolts. Copper bracket. What you want to mainly check out on this, make sure the slide pins are free, not frozen. If they're frozen, you can heat them up a little bit with a propane torch right in here and twist them and get them out. But if they're really frozen, you just might as well just go ahead and install our reman calipers and brackets. All right. So another thing what you want to do on the calipers is remove your pads. Remove the hardware. And down underneath there, you want to clean all that up where that, <clears throat> where that hardware sits. You want to clean all that out of there inside here get all the rust out of there because what rust does when it rusts it expands and when it expands it puts pressure on the brake pads and doesn't allow them to move freely inside the bracket okay and also <clears throat> got your retainer off if the rotor is not loose and you have to smack it with a hammer if you're replacing the rotor, then that's fine. You can hit the rotor surface. I always recommend replacing it. Otherwise, you have to hit it right here. Careful not to hit the studs. All right, so then you get your rotor off. And you see how the rotor is on the inside, nasty. Same thing over here on the hub bearing. You gotta clean this up best you can. This is a stepped hub. Should be. It's usually lower on the inside than here. All right. <clears throat> That's why it's just touching here and there, not there. So you want to clean it all up best you can. Get it nice and shiny. Try not to remove any metal. If it's too pitted and flaking off in chunks, you're going to have to replace it. Most of the time I replace them. All right. <clears throat> So once you got that all nice and cleaned up, then you can put some anesthes on it. So then that'll be ready. And we'll have to work on our caliper, push the piston back in. Get this all cleaned up. Put some paint on them. Pull your pins out. Put some new seal glide on your pins. Twist them as you push them back in. Do not fill this up with seal glide. You won't be able to compress it. All right, they won't go in all the way. All right, I got it cleaned up. 
get both sides done and when you get them done go ahead and put a spray with some paint and also remove your pins dip them in some sil glide roll them in there stick them back in twist them as you're going in do not load this with so glad you won't be able to push them in all the way. Okay. All right, once you got the hub cleaned up a little bit, you'll be able to feel the step in it. You don't want the center higher than the inside and the outside. Then go ahead when you're gonna, before you put your rotor on, put a light film of anesthes on it. And before you put your rotor on, you want to clean your rotor also with soap and water or some glass cleaner, something like that, and remove the shipping oil. Okay. Next you want to do is clean your uh, copper up with a wire brush, get all the dirt out of there, brush the piston, and then inspect your boot, make sure it's not torn. Inspect it, make sure it doesn't have any fluid coming out. And then also, now I'm ready to put together I do is I lift the seal up a little bit, put a little bit of uh, silicone spray on there to allow it when I turn my piston in, that doesn't twist my boot. All right. So if you got one of these tools, you know how it works. Basically, you match up your piece that fits into the notches and then get the tool in there. And then what you want to do is turn it. And as you turn it, you want to hold this at the same time but I always just use one hand and tighten it up and turn this and tighten it and turn that then once you got it all the way pushed in you want to make sure that your notch is like at 6 and 12 because sometimes your pads will come with a little notch on the back side of it and if you got your notch on your uh, piston right here and that little notch won't be sitting in that little hole in the piston. Alright. See what I'm talking about? That piece right here. On top and bottom. Alright, so now that's ready to go. Now I need to go get some parts. All right, now this is the driver's side, metal to metal. We don't know if our piston's frozen inside our caliper. I won't know that until I go and try pushing it in. If it pushes in really, really hard, then I'd say that's a problem. And also, got to make sure that your slides are free. So that's not the problem. And you got to make sure that your, your pads are somewhat movable and they are in there like you wouldn't believe you know they're frozen in there that's what i'm talking about the rust okay rust expands and keeps things from moving so that's one good reason right there but just got to make sure i got to make sure that this is not frozen in there before i go to the parts store because i don't want to take two trips all right, my copper bracket came out real hard. Also, my rotors frozen on there, so sometimes you have to hit them really hard. Got my hub, hub cleaned up. Got my piston pushed back in. It didn't go any harder than the other side. And that's just my uh, silicone spray to keep the boot from twisting. And uh, it's all set, so it must have been those pads frozen in that bracket. Because they're in there pretty good. So I need to get them out and clean it up. All right, just another thing. If you have to pound your uh, rotors off, hit them pretty hard. The trigger wheel on the backside is made out of like ceramic. And they'll get old, and then when you hit them with the hammer really hard, boom, they flake off. So then you'll never even notice. And then when you go back together and you go drive it, the ABS light comes on. So that's the reason why for that, if you run across that problem. All right, so just be careful when you do hit them. 
or the hammer to be aware of. Sometimes you can knock that little trigger wheel off the back side. It comes off in little pieces. Then you might see them on your floor. All right. I'm gonna go get parts. Okay, you got your rotors on, got ANCs on the hub, and rotors on and cleaned. Got your retainer bolt in there. Snug that up. Get your copper bracket. Put your hardware clips on there. Make sure they're bombed out and pushed against each side so it's not rubbing the rotor. Put your copper bracket in there. Get your bolts in there and snug them up. And you want to torque them to, uh, to 77 foot pounds. Okay. And you get your brake pads. If you got one that's got squeak indicators on them, then you should put that one on the inside. Here, I'll show you how to do the outside first. Pad, make sure you got the outside away from the rotor. Put it in there. Push up against it, push it in. And they act like little springs. With clips, you just get it in there. Angle it a little bit, push it. Now you can get your caliper, put your caliper in there, make sure you push these in so they don't get stuck on them, and then get your bolts on there, and your caliper bolts, torque those to 27 foot pounds. All right, you got this side done, you got ANCs on the hub, cleaned up, rotor on, washed, retainer on, caliper bracket, with the uh, slide parts cleaned up and painted. Got the new hardware on there. Got the bracket bolted up, 77 foot pounds. Put your pads in. The squeakers go on the inside. You got your bolts on, 27 foot pounds. Do the other side exactly the same way. And you can go ahead and put your tires on. Torque the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds. Lower the vehicle down to the ground. Go inside it. Start it. Push the pedal to the floor a couple times. Make sure you got a good firm pedal. Because you want to have a good firm pedal before you put it in drive or reverse. Otherwise, you won't have brakes. Okay? So once you get done all that, then you're all set. You need to go underneath the hood. Double check your brake fluid at the reservoir. Top it off as needed. And make sure you're putting in the right type of fluid, three or four, okay? That's it, and that's how you do your brakes on the rear of your vehicle here. If I helped you out, that's awesome. Then you can help me out by subscribing, and I appreciate it, and good luck.